Um, so far, over 200 symptoms have been described as part of COVID. So that's a long drop down menu. Um, there are symptoms that are certainly more common, like fatigue, the brain fog, what we've been talking about. I sort of think about this as a, as a crime. And we're down at the police station, there's many suspects in the suspect line. And I would say in that suspect line, inflammation certainly is a suspicious character. We, we really think that what's happening is what we call friendly fire. In other words, you got infected by COVID, the, your immune system has stepped up to the plate, it's helped you uh, resolve the virus, if you will, in the sense of the acute viral infection. That's the good news. But there's a bit of friendly fire here. In other words, what's happened is the immune system has been so uh, activated that unfortunately it remains activated for longer than we would like it to be. And then on top of that, uh, the virus is largely under control. This thing's still this thing's still stoked up. So we're seeing, in fact, collateral damage. And what happens in the brain is that when the immune system has been activated especially activated for a considerable period of time, weeks and months, we start to see some collateral damage. In other words, in the brain, we've done some of this research ourselves, we begin to see changes in certain parts of the brain. And when we looked at this more closely, we discovered that those areas of the brain where some of that damage takes place is exactly the area we depend on to think. It's exactly the same area we depend on for our energy, our motivation, and how much we enjoy life. So it was a very interesting set of observations. This is why we think inflammation is playing a role. Very, very simply, I sat back and I thought to myself, what are the most common symptoms? The most common, not the only, but some of the most common and really problematic symptoms Amongst people having long COVID, people have a lot of brain fog. Their mind's just really foggy. They, they just can't think very clearly. Secondly, people are just exhausted. They're fatigued. They just have no energy. And we don't know what's causing all of this, but we think something about the immune system is playing some role. So we went through our drop-down menu of potential treatments. We came up with this medicine, Vortioxetine. Why this one? Because this one has been shown to improve brain fog in other conditions. It's been shown to really improve energy and motivation in other areas. And it's also been shown to really improve quality of life and function. And it's an anti-inflammatory. So we thought that's really interesting. So maybe we should actually test it. And that's why we chose this one in our study. I would start off by saying that it's complicated. These things tend to be complicated indeed. But we have been, begun to unravel some of the answer to that question. And what's interesting is that, uh, among other things, uh, vortioxetine affects chemicals in the brain that we know are really, really important for cognition. And cognition in, in really just refers to thinking. It refers to your, your processing speed. In other words, that Pentium chip that's in your head, how fast you can process things and how sharp your memory is and how much you can pay attention. All of that uh, basic function that we all know, we depend on it every day, is cognition. And vortioxine targets the neurochemistries. Now, the neurochemistries, it's a bit like a symphony at the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. There's all kinds of instruments that are playing a role in the melody. Uh, but we do know dopamine, uh, inflammation, in other words, it can reduce inflammation. And there's another one which is really important to the symphony called glutamate. But the gist of it is these chemistries play a role in brain fog and cognition and motivation. And so in many ways, uh, we sort of see Vortioxy as kind of a symphony. It actually has different instruments that are touching on different tunes that create this really nice melody of improving cognition, motivation, energy, and frankly, at the end of the day, quality of life and people's function. There's always side effects. In fact, 70% of people get side effects on placebo. Side effects affects everything in life. The question is, is which side effects are common and which side effects, you know, kind of rain on the parade? Well, we don't see a lot of common side effects, but that's one of the other reasons we chose this one. It has very few side effects. You can get nausea. 
but it tends to go away after a few days and it doesn't really lead to discontinuation. It's kind of a few days, it's kind of annoying, but it goes away in some people uh, who get it. Most people don't get that. Uh, so uh, it's one of the key reasons we did choose that one because it is quite well tolerated. 